Hey everyone, this is Dan Marson from the Cosander Institute for Law and Economics, and I wanted to walk you through a simple way to start scraping the web using Python. Now I have a lot of different programs to do a lot of different things. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you guys how to try to parse the United States Sentencing Commission 2014 Guidelines Manual, and actually everything will be applicable also to the 2015. Let's say you want to go to the USSC website and click on the 2014 Guidelines Manual. And then uh, we want to get HTML documents. And so here's a link to individual chapters and guidelines in HTML. Click there. And we see we have links like HTML here to, and if you look at the bottom left of the Firefox window, it says uh, USSC.gov slash guidelines manual slash 2014 slash 2014 dash chapter dash one. Then over here for chapters uh, 2A to C, 2-C, up here part D, 2-D, there's some regularity here to how it's um, written down, L to X, chapter 2-L-X. Uh, we're going to use this to our advantage to try to um, you know, reduce the amount of hard coding as much as possible. Chapter 3, just 2014-chapter-3, 4, you know, chapter 4, chapter 5, and so on and so on. So I have this Python script here, and it's actually going to cycle through all of the years uh, that we have a guidelines manual in HTML4, and it's going to, uh, if the year is at least 2014, the particular way that the um, guidelines were written out, so like, you know, here for 2C it's 2-C, whereas it, before 2014 they wrote 2A-C in those URLs. What we're going to want to do is do data equals URL lib request URL open, and then we have the whole first part of that was the same, except when we got to the first slash, it would have the year number, and then it would have the year number again, and then dash chapter, and then another dash, and then a particular string. And so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to loop through in this for loop, actually a nested for loop. First, we're going to go through all the years. And then we're going to go through all of URLs, this list that I just created in a couple lines above. Uh, it's going to cycle through all these different chapter headings, and it's going to load a web page for each of those chapters. So once you do that, then you have to you know, read the data, decode, replace. Um, a lot of these replace statements are just particulars of you know, ways that the sensing guidelines were formatted incorrectly. Um, but what we do is we're going to do beautiful soup, and this is a package you should get and install with pip uh, in Python. What I do is I get uh, beautiful soup, and then I use the prettify option. And then what you have to do is you have to look for certain HTML tags within the source code of that website, and that's what beautiful soup is actually very much uh, made for. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look for the strong tag in H2, and I'll show you why. It's because if we do something like look at Chapter 4, the thing is everything starts out with a section number. Actually, it starts out with you know the chapter heading, and this is all in bold, so that's the HTML tag strong. Uh, then we'll see something like introductory commentary. It'll be underlined, and then we'll see these section numbers. So we're going to look for section number, thing like that. So... Uh, I make a checklist of all the headings, which are both strong and h2 HTML tagged. And then we're going to go through those. And what we do is we're going to parse this into the specific sections of what comes up in these um, guidelines. So like, you know, section 4A 1.2 has a title, has section A, prior sentence. And then, you know, you'll see it's no longer bolded here. And this is kind of the text of the guideline. Um, then usually, you know, you have, it ends with commentary, application notes. So, you know, we look for the word commentary centered and underlined, followed by application notes underlined and left justified. Then there's background, which is underlined, and then we have the historical note. So basically I want to parse all these into the guideline text, the application notes, the background, the historical note, the commentary all those different things. So you'll see that it's going to be, um, you know, formatted uniformly throughout the guidelines unless there's some kind of error. So all you really have to do is um, create a new list of lists. And so we're going to say 
for each row, you know, say section, guidelines, statutory provisions, commentary, application note, background, historical note. Those are our, just our first row of the CSV. That's our header list. And then we're going to start filling in the rows below that with the values. And I have a whole lot of code here that we don't have to get into. Um, and of course, part of the purpose of these videos is to kind of introduce faculty to what we can do. Um, so for some of you, it's just enough to know that we can do this. Uh, but anyway, I've written some flags here where I say, like, once you find underlined historical note or underlined application note, that's the historical note. You know, flag that and go into some if statement or for loop or whatever else. Anyway, we can get word counts, character counts, etc. out of that. And what I've done is I've put this into its own directory. So I have a directory where I've actually done all this work already for uh, Tom Miles. And you see that we have... Um, Something like USC, SS, USSCG, so U.S. Sentencing Commission Guidelines 2015 Section 7. And I break everything down into, you know, Chapter 7. And then there's nothing following Chapter 7 except Part A. So then we have Part A, and then they have Authority, and a little bit of Background, and they have Historical Note, and then Part B. And then there's some guidelines under 7B. So 7B1.1, Classification Violations, Part A. Then we have the Commentary. And then uh, we have the application note, the background, and the historical note. So here's the application note on 7B1.1. And then here's the historical note. And it tells you all the times it's been amended, etc. Um, so here this one's got some background where you know some of the other guidelines don't have background. So it gives you this. And another thing that I have it give you is the amendments list, where it just parses all the historical notes and it looks for all the different amendments that have been made to the sentencing guidelines. And this is, uh, you know, 700 some amendments, but each amendment modifies at least one thing. So some things are, so you see, like 422 comes up a lot. So there's about 700 of these amendments, but uh, 1,782 changes. And I can tell you, based on how I parse the string, whether it's effective, amended, or sometimes deleted. And those, uh, so like here's one, 5K2. Uh, section 15 was deleted and it was deleted in 1995 so I have an amendments list of all the amendments and this actually runs pretty slowly and I'll show you I actually um, put this into its own new subdirectory so I'll show you filling in the files this runs pretty slowly uh, it's not that efficiently written but it's written in a way that is pretty clear and you can understand what's going on um, a lot of things that could be uh, condensed or um, run a little bit more efficiently would kind of reduce, I think, some of the clarity of what's going on in the program. Uh, anyway, here we have uh, already done chapter one, uh, and I have the lengths and the word counts in a separate CSV file. And so um, I just have another routine that counts up the number of words in the guidelines counts up the number of words in the commentary section, the application note, word count, etc. So like for example you see here this one has uh, like a non-zero or, or you know greater than one commentary word count which isn't that common but it says you know like commentary portions of this document not labeled as guidelines etc. Uh, and that's before it gets to the application notes or you know there are no application notes for this one in particular. Um, so the program is robust enough that it can handle all different sorts of things that come up in the guidelines manual. So you'll see that we're now up to 2LX. I have it print certain things, like I have it print out character counts. So you, like, you can see here, oh, we get a different character count depending on how we count the characters. Like here, they're all the same. They're all 1, 5, 7, 8, or 9. But we might want to figure out why this character count or word count is giving us a different number from these other three. So that's something to look into when you program it, but uh, it turns out it's uh, just some kind of particularity that I don't remember exactly what, but it's not fatal to the way the program runs or the way the information is gathered. Okay, so I hope that that's helpful, and I hope that uh, if you have any web scraping needs that you would uh, let us know and we can help you with it, or maybe you can figure out how to do it yourself or get started yourself if you have something very simple to do. Um, but be sure to let one of us know down here in the Co-Center Institute and we will help you out. Okay, thanks for watching.